Bitter enemies to the very end, Ariel Sharon and Yasser Arafat never trusted one another and couldn't bury the battles of the past. Yasser Arafat is not only a terrorist, Yasser Arafat is a war criminal according to every criteria. In the early 80s, Yasser Arafat and the PLO were using Lebanon as a base for attacks on Israel. Sharon, as defence minister, ordered an invasion. It was meant to be a limited incursion. Instead, he sent Israeli troops all the way to Beirut. He came here only for one purpose, to destroy the terrorist PLO Palestinian organizations. Sharon would later tell CNN he ordered Arafat's assassination 13 times during that invasion. He had this personal uh, obsession with Arafat, and he had an ongoing vendetta. But his old nemesis survived. Ultimately, under a ceasefire deal, Arafat and his men were allowed safe passage to Tunisia. He always regretted that he let him go away in, in Beirut, because uh, at that moment... Uh, if Arafat were to be neutralized, uh, he thinks that the history would have been, uh, would have taken a different course. A decade later, the Oslo Peace Accord would see Arafat's return to the West Bank. Sharon always considered the agreement a mistake. At the Y River Peace Talks in 1998, as foreign minister, Sharon refused to shake Arafat's hand. His refusal, for example, to shake hands with Arafat. Symbolic, it's a simple gesture, but always negating the humanity of the other, refusing to reach out to the other. This sums up his attitude towards the Palestinians as a whole. Sharon thought that Arafat was somebody who had lied to Israelis and to the rest of the world in, in presenting himself as having made a shift from terrorist to statesman. I think Sharon believed that Arafat never made that shift. By 2002, at the height of the Palestinian uprising, Israeli tanks and soldiers had Yasser Arafat surrounded in his compound in the West Bank city of Ramallah. Sharon was convinced Arafat was behind the suicide bombings and attacks which had left hundreds of Israelis dead. Arafat always denied it, bound by a promise to the United States that he wouldn't kill the Palestinian leader Sharon instead declared Arafat irrelevant, refusing to negotiate with him, refusing to allow him to ever leave his compound. But by the end of 2004, Arafat fell gravely ill, was flown to Paris for treatment, and there he died. Sharon said it was an historic turning point, perhaps a new chance at peace. And now, with the passing of Sharon as well, these two men will share one thing. Neither came close to achieving a lasting peace between the Israelis and Palestinians. John Vors, CNN, Jerusalem.